we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is How Hacks Work. This episode is all about proving that no matter how old you are, all it takes is a genius idea, some household tools and a dose of hard graft to reignite your childhood and create the ultimate big boys toy. That's the world we live in. Grown men dressing up as, as, as video game characters driving around, driving around a, a, a foreign city. From a fairground ride that will blow you away, to keeping the kids entertained and impressing the neighbours while you're doing it. And in our epic hack, we'll be visiting the firing range as Mike and human guinea pig Marcus test out a super-sized version of a classic boy's toy powered by some unlikely ingredients. We need a fuel, which is that, hairspray. Hairspray. Water sports usually take place in actual water. Well, not anymore. This inventive family decided to repurpose their lawnmower and some plastic sheeting to create a water ride to stir the passions of every big kid out there. I kind of get a feeling watching the clip that this guy is just doing it to show off how big his garden is. It's ridiculous, it's like a park. If we were doing this in any garden that I know of, we'd just be hitting flower pots the whole time. The reason that they can move so quickly while the lawnmower itself moves so slowly is because they've amplified the distance that they're turning around. The lawnmower only has to cover quite a small distance. It's a very small circle. The people around the outside have to cover a much larger distance, a bigger circle, in the same amount of time, which means overall their speed is much higher. Oh yes, that's much clearer. Thanks, Chris. The key in this activity is definitely lubrication. You want to make sure that your motion over the surface of that plastic is as smooth as possible. And the way to do that is to get a thin layer of water. These guys have transformed their garden into their own private water park with this radical ride. A hydrating hit! Find mowing the lawn boring while well, this fantastic father decided it was the perfect excuse to build the ultimate garden toy. All it required was a pair of old snowboards, a sled and a willing driver. The key to sliding across the grass here is to keep the friction as low as possible. Snowboards are usually made of composite materials, which means they're layered up from different materials. So on the bottom, there's usually a very low friction material, like a resin or a wax. This means they can slide very easily. So when you're on the slopes, for example, you've got gravity and that's all you need because that's enough force to pull you down. The way that a snowboard works is it increases the surface area over which the weight of whoever's standing on it is spread. So for this one, two snowboards, one small child, actually per unit area, there's not a huge amount of force pressing downwards. If they wanted to make this hack even more fun, what they could do is do it on wet grass and that would reduce the friction between these two surfaces even more. Yeah, come on, Dad, get the sprinkler going so we can really open this thing up. You only have to look at the expression on that boy's face to know the answer to this one, 100% hit! One day this young lad will look back fondly on his childhood and realise just how lucky he was. After all, it's not every boy whose dad builds him a full-size tank to cruise around the neighbourhood. This is perfect for dealing with excuses. Um, where's your PE kit? I've got a tank. Um, uh, why's your homework late? I've got a tank. Why weren't you in school yesterday? I've got a tank. How about the tank ate it? One of the great innovations about tanks is that they have this tread rather than tyres. Wheels actually touch a very small amount of the ground uh, when they go over it. So, the tank would sink into the ground and then it wouldn't go anywhere. 
you've got a lot of traction and a lot of surface area, which is fantastic when you're going over rough terrain. Lots of area to create lots of friction and make sure that it can move regardless of what it's driving over. When it comes to the ultimate big boys toy, it's hard to top a tank. Absolute hit. The fun of a roller coaster is always partly diluted by the two hours spent waiting to ride it. These guys, though, have found a way to avoid this typical theme park experience by building their very own fairground ride in the privacy of their back garden. There's always a bit at the start of a roller coaster where you get winched up and up and up and up. When it's sat at the top, it's got a load of energy pulling it down to the ground and it's just ready and uh, waiting to give that energy out. And then you let it go. And it's all about converting that energy into movement energy or kinetic energy. When you're on a roller coaster and you go around a loop the loop, you don't fall out of your seats because of something called a centrifugal force and that's what keeps you clamped to your seat even as you're going upside down. But if you happen to be an adrenaline junkie who lives for the ultimate rush, this will probably be more familiar to you as your favourite fix of G-Force. Simply put, G-Force is the acceleration that's trying to propel you to a higher speed or make you change direction. Because your body is happy going at its original speed, it acts against the acceleration of the car and you feel like you're being crushed into your seat. And that's where the G comes from, because it's measured according to the same acceleration you get from gravity pushing you into the ground. So a G-Force of 2G feels like having twice the force of gravity pushing on you. 3G is three times, and so on. Just make sure you stop before you reach 10G, as blacking out is one risk worth avoiding for any self-respecting daredevils out there. I think this homemade roller coaster shows a lot of work, a lot of effort, but ultimately, is it going to be good for a person? It doesn't look very strong to me. You're talking sense here, Chris. I don't think even Marcus Bronzy would be crazy enough to test a roller coaster made out of an old garden fence. Fairground rides should be all about screaming with excitement, not out of sheer terror, because it might collapse. Big boy's toy it may be, but it's an even bigger miss. Coming up at Hack HQ, Mike will be showing Marcus how some simple science can produce an epic toy. Whoa! <laughs> So far, we've seen a water feature for all the family, an all-weather garden sled, and cruised around a neighbourhood in a homemade tank. But don't go away, because we're about to show you how to use a leaf blower to liven up a rope swing, and show you the coolest shooting gallery you've ever seen. These mavericks have taken a leaf blower and used it to supersize the classic garden swing into a treat fit for those of us who refuse to grow up. The reason these leaf blowers can propel the swing at all is due to something called thrust. When you take a big amount of air and you shove it in one direction, you generate a force called a thrust. And according to Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if you're applying a force, throwing air out the back of a rocket, then you get an equal and opposite reaction on the rocket, or this swing thing in this case. What it won't do is give you a lot of directionality, so the swing just kind of goes everywhere. And that's why he eventually ends up hitting the tree. If only you told him this before he started swinging, hey, Ali? While this ride may pack more fun than your average swing, I just don't think it's going places. The jury's out on this big boy's toy. You can't underestimate the importance of father and son time. So this dedicated dad created a state-of-the-art shooting gallery to delight every boy out there, big and small. I think that little boy's cheating, because he's like going way over the line to get his gun onto the ball. I wouldn't stand for that. Foam dart blasters are generally powered by air pressure, which essentially means that as you load the thing, it's some sort of spring mechanism. And what that does is it drives a plunger, which compresses a certain amount of air. So once the air pressure is at a high enough level, it will force the projectile out of the gun. In a regular firearm, sort of a normal gun, you get an explosive, and that creates a fast expanding uh, load of gas, which forces the bullet out the front of the gun as fast as possible. Who wouldn't love to be able to levitate like those balls? Well, the good news is that you can. But as always, there's some super science behind that trick. It's one thing blowing a ball into the air, but getting it to levitate is a complex concoction of forces and aerodynamics. Firstly, to get the ball in the air, you need the air blower to be giving an upwards force greater than the weight of the ball. The more air bashing into the ball, the higher it goes. When the air from the blower hits, it travels around the outside of the ball, sticking to its curved surface and speeding up at the same time. 
funny thing about this accelerating air is that it actually sucks slower air from the surroundings towards it, a bit like a vacuum cleaner. This is called a low pressure region. This means that the air on all sides of the ball is constantly pushing it back into the centre of the airflow, and the only way is up. It's exactly the same principle that allows aircraft to fly, because over an aircraft wing you have fast moving low pressure air at the top and high pressure air underneath which pushes the aircraft into the sky. This imaginative dad has created an age-defying toy that will unite every boy out there. A massive hit! These boys decided to pack a bit more than just sunscreen and a book for their day at the beach. Using a length of plastic sheeting, gently lubricated by water, supplied by their petrol-powered pump and hose, they managed to assemble the king of all water slides. Who dares wins. These are probably the most organised bunch of teenagers I've ever come across. They have a petrol pump, they have all the gear, they have hoses, and they're going out to the middle of nowhere, so hats off to them. So what they've got here is they've got the slide made of reinforced plastic. Now this stuff is very shiny to the touch, which means it actually has quite a low friction. So if you were to look at that plastic or perhaps some human skin under a microscope, you'd see that it's not smooth at all. It's covered in some you know, pretty serious texture. And that means that these things can uh, get stuck in each other as you try and slide them over. But the water fills in those gaps and means they can slide much more smoothly. What would make it even better, which I didn't see them doing, is if they use soap because it's what we call a surfactant, which actually lubricates um, anything and lubricates surfaces and allows us to move very smoothly over the slip and slide. When they enter the water at the bottom of the slide, they slow down very quickly because water is actually quite dense compared to air, so it absorbs a lot of their kinetic energy that they've gained from going down the slide. These guys have put in the maximum effort to create a Beach Boys toy, which will definitely leave you feeling pumped. A plastic fantastic hit! Let's head over to Hack HQ to see what Mike has in store for plucky guinea pig Marcus. Mike? Marcus. I got your invitation to your shooting party. Where's your gun? I'm not using firearms. No, that would be far too easy, wouldn't it, Mike? Ah, I get it. You're going to use a fat flamethrower to take out some pheasants. That's a bit sinister, Marcus. <sighs> uh, no, I'm not taking out any poor defenseless little animals with, with flamethrowers and things. Poor defenseless little Marcus, on the other hand. Ah, enough of that, mate. Pick on something your own size, Marcus. Today is our big boys' toys hack, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been raiding the toy box. You used to have one of these? Ah, the trusty spud gun. Weapon of choice for King Edward's army. But how do they work? Good historical knowledge. Right. You get the spud gun, you stick the barrel into the spud, and it gets this tiny little cylinder of potato. Inside, there's a small piston, and when you squeeze the two halves together, the piston compresses all the air until the potato can't hold anymore, and it pops out. Cool. But, Mike, I thought for this hack you'd do something a bit more, you know, Mikey, a bit more fiery. <laughs> Don't tempt fate, Marcus. <laughs> thought you'd never ask. Oh. Too late. We need to look at fuels. Right. Here, I've got a plastic sweet jar with a little dish inside. Right. Strange thing to be carrying around with you, Mike. And inside that, I'm going to place a few drops of this. Ether. Ether is a really flammable liquid, and it's also really volatile. When I put a few drops of ether into that dish, it vaporises really easily causing a mixture of air and ether. That makes an explosive combination that all I need is a little sparker. Press the button, we'll see how explosive that is. Is anyone else having deja vu? Awesome, so a combination of ether and air in this sweet jar and a little spark is gonna give us a big bang? I don't know yet. <laughs> Pop on these all right. and let's have a look. So is this literally just a couple of drops you're going to put in the, in couple, the dish? A couple of drops of ether. There it is there. Yeah, all right. Smells great. And then turn that round and in goes the ether. Brace yourselves, guys. Yeah, you can see it evaporating really yep. quickly as well, can't you? So that's really volatile. You'll see it turning from a liquid into a gas, and that liquid will actually vaporise off, filling that jar with a mixture of ether and air. So we need to leave it about 30 seconds to a minute, okay, just cool. to make sure it's all vaporised. I'm going to switch it on, and then I'll let you press the button. Let's get down nice and close onto this right. and see what it looks like. Three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that blew the lid off. It blew the lid clean off and right up onto the roof.
so we're going to be putting ether in a giant spud gun. No, no, no. I've got something a lot more explosive up my sleeve. I'm not even going to ask, Mike. So far, we've seen the best water slide in the business and an audacious shooting range that will definitely float your boat. Still to come, we've got go-karts on the open road, a toy that lets you walk your dog without taking a step, and we'll be seeing those crazy cats Mike and Markers big up a classic boy's toy in our epic hack finale. It's every overgrown boy's dream come true, cruising the streets in a go-kart dressed as Super Mario. And where, you may ask, might this splendid excuse to relive your childhood dream be possible? Tokyo, of course! Go-karts could go in a range of different speeds, and some of them can go as high as 260 kilometres per hour, which is insane. That is insane, Chris. You wonder why people even bother with normal cars. Most carts are much slower than this, which means that people don't fly off the road and kill themselves at these amateur circuits. So that's the way forwards. Nice slow go-kart, not the streets of Tokyo at 260 kilometres per hour. I've no doubt this video will have big boys from all over the world booking a one-way ticket to Tokyo. Hit central! Dogs love a walk, a lot more than some people like walking them. Hopefully, though, this pooch hasn't realised his lazy owner has raided the toy chest and found a way to walk him remotely. Remote control car, that is. These radio transmitters don't usually have that long a range, so I think he's basically going to be walking behind his dog being walked by a remote control car. Yeah, I don't think the dog is going to get much exercise out of this. It's almost like having a remote control dog, really, isn't it? If you've got a remote control car and it's pulling the dog, just get a remote control dog. For once, George, I think I agree with you. It doesn't matter how much you try and dress this hack up, it just feels wrong. I'm putting this toy in the doghouse. A miss. Goes without saying that soccer is a pretty big deal in the world of sport, but have you ever wondered how you could improve on what's already a very successful format? Well, these Irish legends chose to play it with tractors. Any guy can drive one of these machines, but it's the boy inside which will truly appreciate this take on the beautiful game. You have to wonder how big the changing rooms are. Footballers these days do seem to be a bit... Let's face it, they're a bit wimpy, aren't they? They're a bit sort of quick, you know. Someone brushes against them and they're lying on the floor rolling around in tears. So they need greater protection. Um, but this does seem to be taking it a little bit too far. Where have all the cowboys gone, eh, George? A bit difficult to get a pair of shin pads on a tractor. Those tackles are going to hurt. Tractor football. If this isn't a perfect fit for our big boys' toys app, I don't know what is. A back of the net hit. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig, Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier, Mike showed us how just a few drops of ether could easily lead to a hole in your roof. Now, though, with his trusty sidekick, Marcus, he's going to show us how, when combined with the humble potato, it can also turn an innocent child's toy into some epic entertainment. Oh, ho, ho, Mike, what have we got here? This is my upgraded Spud Gun, yeah? The right. Spud King 10,000. Spud King 10,000. This isn't going to fire little peedy peedy bits of potato. It's going to fire full-size potatoes very far and very fast. We're going to try and shoot each other. Hope you've got a lot of potatoes, guys. How does this work, though? Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to ram a spud all the way down to the bottom there. Right. So it gets to about that section there. Mm -hmm. Then we've got our combustion chamber and we need a fuel, which is that, hairspray. Hairspray? Sounds more like a girl's toy, if you ask me, Mike. Yeah, hairspray is the perfect thing for firing our gun. And the reason is, it's got butane inside, which is the propellant that sprays out the glue. Now, the glue is dissolved in solvents, so you've got a solid, a liquid and a gas all in there that makes much more potential energy to actually fire our gun. Oh, that sounds much more manly. Dignity restored, Mike. Wicked. Well, now I know the science. Let's load this bad boy up. Let's do it. Right, what we need to do, get that spud rammed down that end. OK. <laughs> Right. Am I going to need this then? Yeah, you're going to need a hammer and a rammer. OK. Right. See, you've got the technique. You mean there is actually a technique? Right, yeah, slap yeah. it on. And then smack it in with a hammer. Yeah. 
Perfect. <laughs> Look at that. Right, I'll ram that down to the bottom. So why has it got to be all the way down at the bottom then? Um, it gives it more time inside the actual combustion chamber to fire it out. Right. Right. OK, that's all loaded. Now we need our propellant, the hairspray. Right, how do we get this? Yeah, probably a good question to ask, Marcus. Knowing Mike, it's bound to be complicated. Three squirts. Three squirts. And then... Is that it? You never fail to surprise, Mike. And then we lock it off. So that is all contained in there. We've got our air, we've got our propellant, the hairspray, which has got all of those flammable substances in. All right. Now we need to aim, press that button and fire. Do you want to do the aim in and I'll do the fire in then? <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do that. <laughs> all right, wicked. Safety specs on. All right. Air defenders, grab the button. Let's get ready to fire it. Hit the button. Oh! <laughs> oh that was close. That was so that close. Was so close. <laughs> Not that close. Fire it well. Oh! Oh! oh, oh he almost hit his head. That was a curveball. Right, let's do oh, it right, again. <laughs> All right, fire at will! Oh! What a shot! <laughs> That's amazing! Right in the shoulder, right. I, I would have a go. Right, right. I'll get it back. All right, let's do this. That's good. Fire at will. OK. Oh! Yes! Look at that! I got you right in the nuts instead. I knew what you were going to hit me. Look at that facial expression. Perfect. I'll tell you what, Mike, that was an amazing Big Boys Toys hack. It definitely was, guys. It really was. I mean, much better than that little spud gun. 100% giving it both barrels with a Maris Piper. But <laughs> on your invitation, you said that there was going to be some food. So what, are we going to have some flame grilled pheasants, some quail? You'll be lucky, Marcus. No, no, no. So no. It has got something to do with our hack. Chips. Enough to feed an army. <laughs> you better get peeling. Ah, oh, Mike, you are nothing if not consistent. So that's all for our Big Boys Toys hacks. We've seen some inventive, outrageous and downright mind-blowing ways to have as much fun as possible. And all it takes is time, hard work and the will to be thrilled. See you next time for some more extreme hacks. Extreme hacks.